tomorrow. So six kilometres before they hit the top of the climbing fat. It's a relatively short climb, just seven kilometres long. There's Chad Hager on the right-hand side with the black and white colours on from Sunweb. He was so nervous and excited about coming to the Tour de France. As he was driving to the airport, he got halfway there and he realised he forgot his passport. But luckily he was well ahead of schedule, so he made the U-turn and went back home to get the passport and got the flight on time, which ended up being delayed anyway. I do that sort of thing even when I'm not excited. <laughs> He's one of at least two riders within the peloton this year that learnt the piano when they were kids. Him and Domenico Pozzovivo, both reportedly very good on the ivory. Tickling the ivories. Look at the size of the gear again. With Johan Afredo, as he got out of the saddle there, it looked like a stretching exercise or a strength endurance effort. He's riding an enormous gear. The last five kilometres, they haven't conceded really any more ground. I think it's more a case of the peloton just easing off that little bit, knowing that they're closing in. Allez Le Bleu. Oh, well, the next appointment for the Le Bleu is on Tuesday against Belgium, the team I've picked to win the World Cup football. That will be a fantastic match. They were brilliant yesterday up against the Brazilians. And... If you're in France yesterday, you didn't need to be watching the television to know when the French had scored. You could just hear it from all around. Le Denois at the back in the white colours. Cousin in the black sandwich there in the middle. And Ofredo, the rider, who continues to lead that breakaway group of three. As they hold on to a tenuous one minute, ten second gap, four kilometres away from hitting the base of the first of the official climbs in this year's tour. The Coupe de Vitz, it's a Category 4 climb, just 700 metres long, 4.2% the average gradient, and Afredo is already going solo. Well, he's been wearing them down all day, made a good attack, but here's the counter from behind. Well, Cassin goes a bit, swings across, trying to get the younger Le Danois to ride across to Afredo. Cousin, don't forget, he was allowed to take the sprint. And it looks like the two older riders may be collaborating. No, it's going to be Cousin who closes it. It'll be interesting to see how they play it up here, considering Cousin took that sprint without any competition from the other two. And that graphic that you just saw on the screen with a reference point to the uh, climb, that is to the base of the climb. So there's still just a little over three kilometres till they get to the bottom of the climb. The uh, church of Saint-Martin de Tours. And they quickly make their way past. And that dates back to the earlier part of the 19th century. De Klerk finally starting to sow a few signs of fatigue. The shoulders... Are just starting to wobble around a little bit. Jerome Cousin has done the close down. Le Denoir at the back is just trying to recuperate. And Alfredo was asking the question, what's going on? He wants to actually keep contributing. I got the impression that he didn't actually attack those two. Now he is. Now he is. <laughs> he doesn't want to mess around anymore. This is the strategy that the man in black, as you can see... Jerome Cousin is tightening up the shoes. This is the strategy he used at Paris-Nice this year to win that stage in the sister on. He foxed his way to victory. Well, they may have allowed him to roll through the intermediate sprint and take the points. But he's not going to be content with just that. He wants a podium appearance. Absolutely he does. And this is a significant day for that team. This is their region. They want success. And when it comes down to the sprint, they'll be hoping for a good result from Toma Buda, who, just like Fernando Gaviria, has been a world champion on the track in the Omnium. So they've got really similar backgrounds, but Gaviria has proven himself at this level on the road. A minute and four seconds. And the tempo now in the peloton, it starts to build up in anticipation of the finish as opposed to the chase of the breakaway. Look at Craddock still just there, 
but still favouring that left shoulder. It really does look sore. Yeah, looks in a lot of bother. And he's still there, 30 kilometres to go. How must you feel as Tobias Ludwigsen, day one of the tour, just 20 stages still to come. He's already got the grimace on. He spent the whole day on the front with three others sharing the workload. A tough start. It's a tough start. It's, well, it's one of the toughest jobs in the peloton, being a, a domestique on days like this. Riders like these three, they choose which day they go and try and get in the break. It doesn't always work, so they spend a day in the bunch. A guy like Ludwigsen, he'll be asked to ride on the front almost every day that there's a chance. Well, not almost, just every day there's a chance for Arnaud Dumas. So he's going to do a lot of kilometres on the front. And now this is a vastly different scenario to what we saw at the intermediate sprint. For these three, the top of this climb is effectively their finish line. It's as important as the finish line because they know they won't survive to the stage finish. So this is a chance for a podium appearance as the leader of the King of the Mountains classification. It should be about 500 metres to the top. In the race book, it says 28 kilometres to go is the top. Fredo has been doing so much work. He's the rider that sits on the front. All those Vendée flags, the red and the white, you can see that same flag on the side of the jersey, the man in black, Jerome Cazon. And there it is. Got a glimpse of it now. Attack okay. from the back. Afredo goes. Ludanois around the outside. The youngster, the 24-year-old, squeezing and closing the door on Jerome Cazon and getting the points. As Jerome Cazon is trying to go on with it. But Ludanois is straight away, you can see he's reaching into the jersey. That's to talk back to the team car where Dad is sitting. Got it. You could see, because he was trying to look for the banner. He was looking over the shoulder of Alfredo, trying to see where it was to go. And he just got out anticipated by the young Le Damois. He got the jump and managed to hold him off. So Le Damois much deserved one point. And he'll be wearing the polka dot jersey tomorrow and on the podium this afternoon. Not all points are created equal. That is the most important point of his career. And just 42 seconds now, the gap to the peloton as they really switch their attention towards the stage finish as Alfredo again tries to go solo. It looks like Cousin has had enough. He's put the hand up, wants another bidon. As Alfredo starts to ride off into the distance. As while these two were sprinting, Alfredo just kept that same tempo. And now Cousin, well, he's going again. Ludan was not interested. He's got his prize. There's nothing more to gain. The other two now, they're fighting for the prize. Is the most combative on the stage. Now he increases the speed. Le Damois going to ride his way back across. But his job is done. 49 seconds the gap with 27 kilometres to go. The youngster from Team Fortineo, Samsic, he knows it's in the bag. Still like to stay out here a little bit longer. Good TV time. Good coverage for the sponsor. And just enjoy the cheers of the local crowd because he is the local boy of this stage. And he's fighting his way back 58 kilometres per hour through the speed trap. And tomorrow, again, there's only one categorised climb. It's Category 1, and it comes after just 28 kilometres covered. Sorry, Category 4, just the one climb, Category 4 tomorrow, at 28 k's into the stage. So perhaps we see Le Denoir go for the break again early. Perhaps. Still Robert Hessig at the front, the black and yellow colours. A team helper this time around. Normally, traditionally, one of the team leaders for Lotto and El Jumbo. It's the only team he's ever ridden with throughout his career. And he came up through their development squad. He's now 32 years of age. Well, the big team's really starting to mass at the front now. Bora Hansgrove moving towards the front for Peter Sagan as well. It was Sky on the left-hand side. And the gap... Really starting to tumble down. 45 seconds for our leaders, 26 kilometres to go. And Alfredo showing his displeasure, especially at Jerome Cousin. You know who would have been happy watching that sprint for the one point? Niels Pollock. Yes. <laughs> Seeing Cousin get beaten at his own game. It was Niels Pollock that was in the breakaway with the man in black, Jerome Cousin, at Paris Nice this year. The Frenchman outsmarted the German. This time around, though, it was the younger Frenchman in that group, Kevin Le Damois, that managed to pick up that all-important points. You can just see the increase in the pace as they ride through Vicks. 
Peloton moving visibly a lot faster than it has been over the last 50 kilometres. And it's not single file anymore. Whereas early run it was single file because there was 120 kilometres to go and they were just riding in cruise control mode. Now it's more bunched up because there's a battle to stay up the front and stay out of trouble. And we're seeing them all coming towards the front in team formation. 25 kilometres remaining at the front of the race with a breakaway group of three who've been off the front since kilometre zero. All those riders, they'll be getting the same message from the director sportif. Ride good positions, stay safe, stay near the front. A little update on the conditions here at the finish line. Just ever so slightly, partly cloudy. And just a breeze, but it's a slight head breeze. So it's just coming in against the riders ever so slightly. And this drag uphill, so it extends that sprint, makes it feel longer than it is. So a, a late sprint makes is probably the key. Timing more important. Timing is important, but like Gavidia at an intermediate sprint, if you can hit out early and get a gap, nobody can get the slipstream, then you're away. Always more than one way to skin a cat and win a sprint. Wilson Craddock still at the back, still surviving. Problem here for one of the Lotte Sudal riders. Jens Kirkelier. He's just getting a bike or a wheel change. Getting himself back in the peloton. He'll be important for Andre Greipel. New team for Jens Kirkelier this year. For the past five or six years, he's been a member of the uh, Mitchelton Scott team. Now he's back with the Belgians. In fact, he's riding for a Belgian team for the first time in his career. He started out for two seasons with the French team Cafetas, then moved across to Mitchelton Scott, as we now know it, the Green Edge team, before this year switching to Lotto Sudal. This is his third appearance of the Tour de France. That's been a stage winner in one of the Grand Tours. That's the uh, Tour of Spain, the Volta Spain. He won there two years ago into the Basque Country, into Bilbao. Not one of the protected riders on this team, so he's having to do the job himself. Back through the convoy of cars, and then he'll play a support role for Andre Greipel in the final 10 kilometres. And with the gap now down to 30 seconds, even the Mavic neutral service vehicle has been taken out of that gap. Ofredo, is he going again? Yes, he is. And this time, Cousin wants to go across without the company of Le Danois, and he gets the chance to do so. So we the battle between those two for the red number to be worn tomorrow as the most combative. It's been a successful day for Kevin Le Danois. two elder statesmen from that original breakaway group of three and they get together and straight away you can see the cohesion within these two and Le Denoir in the white colours has put up the white flag he will return to that peloton and now for him it's eat drink and his recuperation process actually gets underway with 22 kilometres still to go on the stage